The pace of creativity has changed. People are being asked to create more in many mediums and faster than before. Photoshop CC, the world's leader in digital imaging, brings new innovations, workflow enhancements, and Creative Cloud integration to users so that they can create with everything they've got wherever they are. So what I'm going to do is walk you through a workflow where we're going to not only use uh, Photoshop CC, but we also have Lightroom, Premiere Pro, Muse, and Digital Publishing Suite Single Edition. And we're going to tie them together into a story that Creative Cloud members and photographers can relate to. So let's get started. What I'd like to do now is I'm going to start off in Lightroom. Now Lightroom is great because this is where I manage all my photos. And in many cases, I can make non-destructive adjustments to those photos right in Lightroom. So what I'd like to do is take this image, head over to the Develop module, and then I'm going to simply scroll down to the lens corrections. So what I'd like to do with this photo is not only straighten it, but it also needs a perspective adjustment. So in lens corrections, we've traditionally adjust lens distortions. For example, from a fisheye lens, maybe uh, making it so it's not so curved on the edges. But now in Lightroom 5, we've got this great new upright feature. So with upright, it's currently off. And if I just need to make the photo level, well, I could just click level and that will level it, but it's not correcting the perspective. So if I go vertical, I can get both level and vertical at the same time. And I can go, of course, go full. And that not only corrected and made the photo straight, but it also corrected the perspective issues. And again, this is all non-destructive. I can at any time bring this photo back up and just simply go to off. Now, of course, I love auto, so whenever you get the chance, just try auto first. If that doesn't work, then you can try the other options. So I'm gonna go ahead and go full and just simply head back. Uh, we can head back to the library module or we can just continue to adjust photos here. The next thing I'd like to do is I'm gonna bring up a photo that I wanna make an adjustment for. And <laughs> this guy got a tattoo and he probably regrets it at this point. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, remove that tattoo. Now, in the uh, traditional sense of removing parts of an image that are non-circular, I'd have to go into Photoshop and use the healing brush and, and things like that. And Photoshop's a great tool, but I want to minimize my trips to Photoshop whenever I can. So we've got not only the spot removal tool, but we can now use the spot removal tool in a new way. So I can adjust the size, but for the first time, I can do a non-circular, basically custom shape uh, adjustment. And of course, I can pick this up, move it around, continue to work with that tool, move this around, and get just the adjustment I need to remove that tattoo, again, non-destructively. All right, so now that we've got that, let's take a look at one more adjustment here. I've got this image of a church. And in this case, uh, the when I shot this, it was just the window light really coming in almost from the ceiling uh, down into the church. And of course, we can see it lighting the banister, we can see it lighting the floor and part of the wall. But what I'd like to do is add more light to this. So new in Lightroom 5 is a brand new radio filter. And this radio filter allows me to make all kinds of adjustments in a, in a radial or circular fashion. So I can adjust the exposure, brightness, contrast, saturation, clarity, so forth and so on. Now, you might be thinking, well, this sounds like a vignette if you just do it in a circle. And you're right, but a vignette is only usually from the center, and typically you can only do one. So for example, if I make this adjustment, it will make the adjustment and it will start to make the adjustment every, to everything outside the circle, but I can invert the mask. And so now I'm making the adjustment to everything inside the oval, which I can continue to adjust, and more importantly, I can pump up the exposure. And I can see that there was writing on that wall that otherwise would have been lost and that I had completely forgotten about. Now again, a vignette can do this kind of work, but what I don't get is the ability to do more than one. So I can go ahead and put another one down. And again, I can invert the mask for that one. And once again, I can adjust the exposure and I can pick it up and move it around. It's like my own little flashlight I can walk around the room with and see what else I might see in the room. So there you go. And these can be tilted, they can be resized, turned on, turned off, deleted, added more, because this is all non-destructive. So I'm going to head back to the library module. And there's one more photo I need to adjust. But in this case, I actually need to do this one in Photoshop. If we look at this in loop view, 
we can actually see that this particular photo in full screen, which by the way, just hitting the letter F in Lightroom, gives me the brand new full screen capability. And we can see that this photo is out of focus. Now typically, I'd see a photo like this and I'd delete it or mark it for reject. But now with the new Photoshop CC, we're gonna go ahead and say we wanna edit this photo. And we're gonna go into a new filter under the sharpen menu called shake reduction. And what shake reduction allows me to do is it will automatically analyze the photo. So I didn't have to do anything. And it's looking for camera movement, not motion in the photo, but actually camera movement that made this photo out of focus. And so it found the, the uh, blur region or it created a blur region that will show me the direction of the camera shake and then it will adjust for it. So once again, before a photo I wouldn't have used to after a photo I would absolutely use. So when I click OK and save that photo and return back to Lightroom, Lightroom has already made the adjustment and there I am back in Lightroom with my photo. And Photoshop and Lightroom are great. But what I'd love to do is talk about a couple more Photoshop features. So let's go in and let's open up a photo here. And we'll just pick, uh, we'll pick the same photo we used earlier of the church. And we'll just open it up. And now that we got this photo open, what I'd like to do is point out a couple of, more, a couple of new things in Photoshop CC. So the first thing is, uh, I work between two computers, actually two laptops. I've got my work laptop and a home laptop. And whether it's your work machine or your home machine or a Mac or a PC, typically if you have Photoshop on both from Creative Cloud, you're gonna want the same settings. You're gonna want all your preferences, all your actions, all the things you've created that make Photoshop what it is to you. So now in Photoshop CC, if I head to the Photoshop menu, I can actually do sync settings. I can sync my settings to Creative Cloud and actually have those settings available in Creative Cloud synced to my other machines that are signed into Creative Cloud. That way, I get all of my tool presets, actions, preferences, gradients, all the things I create manually without me having to create them again and again and again on each machine. When I add a new machine in, a new copy of Photoshop, I just bring those settings right down. One more thing is that once I've got this image set up, I can actually go in and uh, share it on Behance and get feedback. Now, I open this image up already and I forgot that this image was the original RAW and I haven't done that radio filter. Well, new in Photoshop CC, without me having to close the image just to open it back up again in Camera Raw, I have the ability to go right to a Camera Raw filter. So basically treat this open image and open it in Camera Raw as a filter. And at that point, I can use the same radio filter and apply the same kinds of techniques in this photo. Once I click OK, there it is. If I want to get feedback on this photo from my Behance community, I can just simply go up to the File menu, Share, to, share on Behance, log into my Behance account, and get immediate feedback from the community that follows my um, activity on Behance. So great to have that tie-in, not only in Photoshop, but also in Lightroom. So we've taken care of the photos, but now we wanna to continue to tell our story with video. And there's no better video editing program on the planet than Premiere Pro. So as a Creative Cloud member, you get to download Premiere Pro and use it. Don't have to pay anything extra for it, you just get to start using it the minute you join Creative Cloud. So I'm a Creative Cloud member. That means I've got Premiere Pro installed. I'm just gonna go ahead and click on it and start off with a brand new project. And what I'd love to do is get my images and my DSLR video into Premiere Pro. So I'm gonna go ahead and go out to a folder here that I've got on the hard drive. I've brought in the images and video from my memory card. I'm just gonna go ahead and let's take a look at the video first. I have all the clips that I wanna use from the Safari. Just gonna go ahead and drag those in. So just simple drag and drop to bring in those video clips. Now, as I scrub through or just hover over the video clips, I can actually see kind of a preview of which videos are which, so I know which ones I wanna start with or which ones I wanna use. So I know we were kind of uh, headed on the Safari um, 
and we've got different scenes here that I can start with. And I think I want to start with the elephant. Now, I've got the videos in, but what I don't have is a timeline. So I'm just going to go ahead and right click on the elephant video. And I'm just going to say, give me a new sequence from clip. And that will basically just take the video. And I didn't have to think about what video settings do I need to create with? Which camera did this come from? What resolution is it? Or any of those things. It automatically detected that from the clip and made a timeline that perfectly matches it. So I can go ahead and scrub through the video right on the timeline, make any adjustments I want, play it in real time without having to do any rendering. Now, of course, I've got the one clip in place. I'd like to get some more. So I'm just going to go ahead and simply select through and grab more of these clips. And I can just simply drag them all here and do an insert to insert every clip that I just selected onto the timeline. So I have the beginnings of my video. I like to go ahead and make some adjustments. So uh, for example, we don't need necessarily to start off with the rear view mirror of the truck in that shot. So what I'd love to do is simply trim it. Now we have various tools to do our edits. I'm gonna do a ripple edit and just go ahead and start trimming this down. And that will go ahead and slide the timeline back down, giving me that starting point. Now, I would continue this process, but for the time and sake of this video, you know I would just keep making my edits until I got each clip trimmed to the, what I need. But what about the stills? As a photographer, you probably shot some stills too. So let's go ahead and let's go back out to the finder where we've got the images in a folder. I'm just going to go ahead and drag the whole folder in. And now that I've got that folder, I can double click on it and I can see the shots that I took with my DSLR and I can go ahead and now just simply arrange them right in this bin to get them in the order that I want them in. And the reason I'm doing this is because not only do I get the benefit of being able to arrange them, but now if I go back to my timeline, I can go to the end or anywhere I need to insert these uh, clips or these stills, select them and just simply say automate to sequence. Basically take them in the selection order and automatically apply default transitions between them. So when I click OK, my stills are there, kind of like a slideshow that fades in and out. So if I go here and play it back, we'll see the first image. It'll fade to the next image and to the next image and to the next image. So we've got our video, with the makings of our video already started. So I'd continue working in Premiere till I got my video just right. Then I would do an export right from Premiere using the Adobe Media Encoder that's included. And I can get the video out in any format I need for desktop, web, or mobile devices. Now, let's do some output. We've got our, we've got our photos edited. We've got our video. Now let's head over and how about if we need to create a website? We've got this great new product for designers called Adobe Muse. And with Adobe Muse CC, I can go and create a website without having to write any code. So we've got the beginning of the site here. We've got some pages that we can, for example, double click on and preview. I can preview this page right in Muse, or I can even preview it in my favorite browser. So when I say preview page in browser, that will render out the HTML from everything I just laid out manually. And I can go ahead and start to scroll through the site and even see the new parallax scrolling feature in Adobe Muse CC. All right, so now that we've done that, we need to work with our images. So let's go ahead and go back to the site, double click on one of the pages that we now want to put in a slideshow. So to do this, we'll just go in, grab a blank slideshow right from the widget library. And from there, we're prompted to make our setting changes. So for example, I don't want any captions. I don't really need a counter. And what I'd love to do now is go grab my images. So we'll just select the images right from the folder here. They can be JPEGs, they can even be PSDs. That will grab them in the order that I select them and put them right in my slideshow, ready to go. So if I preview this, we can actually let the slideshow auto play or we can navigate through it just that easily. 
So now I've edited photos, made a video, started my website, shared my work in progress on Behance. What could possibly be left? And what's left is building an app for the iPad using Digital Publishing Suite Single Edition. So what I'm going to do now is head over to Adobe InDesign. And with Adobe InDesign, we have the ability to lay out iPad apps using Digital Publishing Suite Single Edition. And as a Creative Cloud member, you get to create an unlimited number of iPad apps. So I've got a page here open in InDesign where I've got some images that I'd love to turn into a slideshow. We'll just simply select those images and we're gonna align them on top of each other. So we'll say align to the left, align to the tops, and now that they're all selected and on top of each other, we'll simply turn that into an object state. And the only other thing I have to do is at this point, using my folio overlay panel, is set it to autoplay the slideshow and let users swipe the images on their iPad to swipe between the images in the slideshow itself. Now from that point, Using the Folio Builder panel, I'd create a folio and simply go to Create App right in this panel that walks me through the entire process to go from an InDesign document to an iPad app. Now let's go ahead and take a look at that app on the iPad. I've got my iPad Mini here. We're just going to go ahead and launch the app. It's got its own little icon. And from here, I can swipe through the various sections, and I can even interact with that slideshow. And if you really want to take it up a notch, we can even do panorama views. And as a photographer, this is great. With dozens of new and reinvented features, including the most advanced sharpening tools available, new Adobe Camera Raw 8 powerful workflow enhancements for designers, and cloud-enabled features, Photoshop CC continues to be the leader in digital imaging. And as a Creative Cloud member, you can now take advantage of not only Photoshop CC, Lightroom 5, but also the new tools that you may not have looked at before, such as Premiere Pro, Adobe Muse, and Behance integration to really take it to the next level as a photographer and only available in Adobe Creative Cloud.